Hi everyone, HBox here again. Um, I've been getting some requests for me to give an entire summary of the timeline of events that happened in the past week concerning all the drama, all the you know cup cancellations, everything with Nintendo, all in one concise video. That way people aren't jumping from one to the other and not really understanding the sequence of events or the, chron the chronology of, the, uh, of everything that went down. So, this video right here, by request, is going to alleviate that issue and feel free to watch it in 2x speed or whatever if you're not caught up but this should pretty much put you as to where we are right now so let's begin november 29th 5 51 p.m smash world tour posts the cancellation announcement on twitter claiming that on night of 11 23 the night before thanksgiving they were told by nintendo that the tour could no longer operate as they did not have a commercial license they went on to mention that many organizers were told by panda that the smash world tour would be shut down or were threatened that they could not be part of the Panda Cup and Smash World Tour simultaneously. And then Nintendo, otherwise, when asked about this, um, said the same thing. So, they canceled the Smash World Tour. Everyone was confused. Was it Panda? Was it Nintendo? Who, whose fault was it? Why isn't it happening? But the only thing for sure was that they were told they could no longer operate. November 30th, 1216 AM. Nintendo responds to Kotaku regarding the Smash World Tour, claiming that they were unable to come to an agreement with Smash World Tour for a full circuit in 2023. Um, and this uh, goes as follows. Unfortunately, after conversations with Smash World Tour and given the same deep consideration we apply to any potential partner, we were unable to come to an agreement for that circuit in 2023. Nintendo did not request any changes to or cancellation of remaining events in 2022, including the 2022 championship event, considering the negative impact on the players who are already planning to participate. Uh, negative impact was not considered, and everyone suffered the negative impact. No surprise there. So that happened. As soon as that happened, Smash World Tour responded to that. This was also November 30th at 1.51 a.m., to which they responded, We are unsure why they are taking this angle, especially in light of the greater statement and all that it contains. To be clear, we asked Nintendo multiple times if they had considered the implications of canceling the championships as well as next year's tour. They affirmed that they had considered all variables. We received this statement in writing from Nintendo shortly after our call, it's Nintendo's expectation that an approved license be secured in order to operate any commercial activity featuring Nintendo IP. It is also expected to secure a license well in advance of any public announcement. After further review, we found that the Smash World Tour has not met these expectations around health and safety guidelines and has not adhered to our internal partner guidelines. Nintendo will not be able to grant a license for the Smash World Tour in 2022 or any Smash World Tour activity in 2023. And Smash World Tour wanted to make sure they didn't even submit a 2020 application yet because they were still trying to figure out the 2022 license, which they submitted in April. Uh, Nintendo, including everything for the next year, was an addition they weren't even expecting. And they said that in our call that accompanied the statement, we asked multiple times if we would be able to continue to operate without a license as we had years past with the same unofficial standing with Nintendo. And we were told point blank that those times are over, quote unquote. They followed up the call with the statement in writing, again confirming both the 2022 championships and all 2023 activity were in the exact same boat. So that was Smash World Tour's response to Nintendo's Kotaku interview. And then on December 2nd, 1215 AM, Nintendo issued a second statement claiming that their decision to not grant Smash World Tour license had nothing to do with Panda and was purely based on their assessment of Smash World Tour events not meeting their health and safety standards. Surprisingly, Nintendo goes on to claim that they did not request the Smash World Tour be canceled despite this and that the cancellation was Smash World Tour's own decision. And to this, of course, uh, Smash World Tour responded December 2nd, 8.43 a.m. And in the second statement, they said, We are struggling to understand why Nintendo contacted us last week at all if they truly wanted us to continue operating. We're struggling to understand why they wouldn't simply reach out after the event rather than rush to meet with us before the Thanksgiving holiday break, just two weeks before our championships event. Regardless, we stand by our first follow-up, and we want to re re reiterate that we received our notice in writing from Nintendo. We had a direct response to our questions in our call if we could continue to run the championships and the 2023 tour with the unofficial mutual understanding. We were told once again those times are 
over. In the second statement, they're just repeating everything that happened, showing they are purely confused about everything that's happening. We're also struggling to understand what the statement means for tournament organizers in general and the potential implications made about unlicensed events. Many organizers have already reached out to us asking if Nintendo's response is a statement of public permission to run unlicensed events. We are wondering this as well. The most disappointing and concerning portion of this statement was this quote. Panda Global will continue to be a key partner, and we look forward to receiving proposals from other groups for tournament licenses. In the meantime, Panda continues to advocate on behalf of the Super Smash Bros. community, even to the point that Nintendo has advocated for other organizations and tournaments to work with Nintendo, such as the Big House and organizers of the Smash World Tour, to benefit the larger Smash Bros. community. Um, and that was concerning because that means Nintendo had been aware of Panda's behavior for quite some time. And yet, so much they directly told us on multiple occasions that it would be addressed. After countless corroborating testimonies from other community leaders and organizers, Nintendo continues to back Panda as a key partner and claims that Panda continues to advocate on behalf of the Super Smash Bros. community. And the reason, of course, why they were upset about Panda is because the CEO at the time, uh, Dr. Allen, was found to have threatened other tournament organizers and saying they would not be able to run their events at all next year if they weren't part of the Panda Cup. Um, this inf information spread across social media. It was corroborated, corroborated by multiple TOs, and as a result, uh, Panda was effectively thrown into a very bad spot. Uh, everyone was calling for Dr. Allen to step down, um, and things got really, really messy really, really quickly. So... After all this happened, um, and everyone is wondering what Panda's going to do, uh, at December 2nd, 1.10 p.m., Panda issued their first statement, claiming that their team was not informed of any intentions to cancel the Smash World Tour, nor did they seek that result. And once again, that means that neither Nintendo, as they claim, or Panda, as they claim, had the intention of canceling the Smash World Tour, which we now know uh, clearly isn't the case. Uh... In this statement, they go on to defend Panda CEO Dr. Allen with the exception of an interaction with Beyond the Summit and corroborate the Nintendo's claim that the Smash World Tour was not forced to cancel. Now, this statement caused a hellfire on the landscape of the Smash community because it was not showing accountability. Um, it was defending Dr. Allen, and it really wasn't solving the issue at hand. As a result, 80% uh, of Panda's team left the organization, likely in protest, discomfort, whatever it might be. This included Plup, IBW, Wadi, Little Z, Coney, and many, many others. TK, Vicky Kitty. These were all namesakes of the organization. They all stepped down to leave the organization after hearing what Dr. Allen had done. And one by one, the community came out in support of these players, knowing that they needed a new home and a place to be. So because of all that, um, you know, everyone went to main stage, and at main stage there was some silence from Panda and Dr. Allen. Um, and on December 5th, 12.06 a.m., right during uh, the finals for Melee at main stage, um, Panda released a second statement claiming Dr. Allen is no longer CEO and the Panda Cup is postponed in a second statement. Um, and right there they also mentioned that they would have a separate IMC, that's, uh, that's an interim management committee to act as the CEO to navigate in the critical time. So Dr. Allen steps down as CEO. However, it doesn't remain clear whether or not Dr. Allen still owns stock in the company or what it might be. That is unclear in terms of how much he's actually not part of Panda anymore. But the IMC, of course, works with team members that desire to, that desire to resign. So everyone who stepped down to make that transition away from the team smooth and not legally binding, and of course, those people who feel displaced to the events to find a home, either with Panda again, or with another organization. So, clearly an effort to do right by the community after the outcries that were um, heard across social media. So that was December 5th. And finally, December 5th, 1 a.m. This is where we are most currently. As I'm recording this, it's December 6th, uh, midnight, so one day since. Uh, Dr. Allen sends a cryptic tweet announcing that his statement is coming with the bullet points Smash World Tour lied and BTS leadership put the community in jeopardy and nothing else. 
This was expected after a while, uh, considering that, in a sense, he lost his org, he had to step down as CEO, and there probably is, uh, I imagine, frustration or anger on his side. But uh, there's two sides to every story, so a lot of people, Ludwig especially, were waiting, genu he, Ludwig said, genuinely curious to hear, you know, what these claims are. Um, but of course, uh, you know, this was also met with universal, near, near universal uh, uh, negativity from the community. Because, you know, it became very obvious when multiple TOs were corroborating that that was the truth and what had happened happened. And even Panda admitted to that in their first statement that there was, you know, that bad blood between BTS and Dr. Allen. Um, but for it to go further down the rabbit hole for the entire team of this band and to be where, at, where it is at this state, it seems like basically one final desperate plea or attempt to get people back on his side, or maybe there's a giant side to the story no one knows, and we're going to be all shaken up again. So hopefully this caught everyone up to speed on what's going on. Um, and again, this video is probably just for people who, you know, were, were very, very confused. It is a confusing situation. It's a frustrating situation. And with main stage now over, um, we're in the, in the start of December. Neither cup is happening. But there is now, thankfully, uh, this is another part of the story I wanted to mention. As a result of all the chaos, Ludwig stepped up and offered to host the Scuffed World Tour. And the Scuffed World Tour features 16 players from Melee and 16 players from Ultimate. The top 8 placers from the Smash World Tour ranking, there was a point system in Smash World Tour for Melee and Ultimate. So those 8 were invited, myself included. And then Ludwig, Aiden, and his team are handpicking the other 8 um, to join them to make a 16-man invitational for Melee and one for Ultimate, I believe, with a $50,000 prize pool across both games. And what they're also doing uh, recently, as we have heard, is that they're giving basically um, players the chances. If you were the highest-ranking player in your region, um, they're also using that as their criteria to bring people in. So, of course, there was, like, situations where, based upon where you were from, you weren't able to get enough points in the first place. And people had to scrap to locals, go to wherever they could, and that was hard for a lot of people. And in this case, it would be very frustrating for them to do all that work and still not get their chance. So, um, this means that a lot of interesting talent uh, that you didn't see before will be at these tournaments, including uh, Ingen, the Marth from Japan, Raiken, uh, Futsuka Minman, I believe, um... And this depends if Zane does or doesn't go. Uh, Kadoran might drop for that as well. It's all in the air as to what it'll be. And in Japan, uh, I'm sorry, in Ultimate, I believe they're still trying to figure out uh, those players as well. But in, uh, in any case, it is the best news possible to hear that these players that have been grinding so hard in their, what you consider remote regions, do get that shot to shine and do get that shot to see some sort of glory before the year ends. And it's I've been saying since the very, very start, when there's a problem, when the community is down, and when there's, when it seems like nothing can be resolved, Smash community always finds a way. So I'll be there. Huge props to um, Mogul Moves and Lud's team for putting this on, as they usually do, especially after having already put on LSI earlier this year, which was a massive invitational uh, with huge stakes. And now, basically, they're saying, let's run it back one more time. With 16 players in each, it's basically a mini-summit happening. I don't know if it's a one- or two-day event, but I believe it will be uh, in uh, Los Angeles, from what I understand. Um, and I believe that it will basically go on on the uh, exact same day that the Panic Cup Finals would have been. And now there is no Panic Cup Finals, and that's all canceled indefinitely. Uh, you know... Dope. <laughs> So yeah, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, stay hungry, and I'll see you next time.